Hello, everybody. Ross here, teacher talk it up on your screen. I'm just going to give a moment for everyone to get connected, logged in. Um, everything is getting recorded. Um, just to make sure that you are in the right place and you've not clicked some random Zoom code, uh, we're looking at Balance, an excellent piece of software. It's a bit of a show and tell um, session. So we're going to go through those specifics in a moment. So if you're watching on Zoom for the first time, um, you can, on the top right hand corner, you can switch to gallery view to see everyone or just speaker, which is me. When the slides appear, and there's not too many slides, um, will still appear in the top right hand corner unless you're on a tablet. Uh, might be maybe at the bottom, so I can point upwards, that type of stuff, and we'll do some time for it. I'm just going to say hello in the chat box. So we know we've got people watching from 25 countries, maybe not all right now live. And I know people will be watching this recorded. Um, so here's your chance. Um, tell me where you're watching from, what town, village, city, and I'll give your uh, little village, town, city, a little shout out uh, online uh, while we get warmed up. And just tell us um, who you are, what you do, you know, what, what do you teach, um, or what's your role. I've got a few little survey questions uh, going to come your way as well. So while you do that and get connected, um, where are you? So hello, Rebecca from Colchester. Anybody else, or is it just me and Rebecca? Okay, Toddington, Peterborough, head teacher. Thank you, Emma. I hope you're well. I know it's a very challenging time for everybody. And um, while you're also doing that, I'm just going to, um, I like a bit of graphics. I know Andy does our uh, CEO here from Balance, who you'll hear from later. Um, there is our map from the UK. So you might be able to see yourself if you're watching here uh, in the UK. And if I just pop over another graphic to this one. If you're watching from somewhere else, um, outside of the UK, then you might see your little dot here on the map. So what we are trying to do is try to keep a international perspective. Um, and I know Balance do have some international clients, so we'll do our best to keep uh, everything uh, as broad as possible. Um, so uh, in the chat box, where are you watching from? We've got Kuala Lumpur. Hello, Sam. What time is it there? Must be uh, nearly bedtime. Lithuania. Good night. And oh, midnight. Variety. Well done, you. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Um, right. So uh, on the screen also, uh, for people watching, um, I'm just going to put on a little survey. There's just two simple questions. You just complete them both, then press submit, and then I'll share the results with you. Um, so just to get started, um, you're going to hear from Rebecca and Ben from Balance, who are going to go through uh, some of the demos, some of the kind of core messages. I'm essentially your, your host, so I'll do my best. Uh, hello, Rebecca from the Welsh Valleys. Um, so we're going to get this recorded. Chat box just comes to me only. So I'm doing the admin, the kind of compare of the session. You decide if you want to keep your cameras on or off. The recording is going to get shared with everybody in the group. So just be conscious of your background, you know, little children, that type of stuff. Um, and then if you want to unmute yourself, could you maybe hold off until the end of the session and then, you know, kind of, uh, you know, in about 45 minutes time, we'll have a Q&A session. So either in the chat box um, or anything specific and we'll answer those as we go through. Um, so I think that's it from me, essentially. So you'll know who I am. So I'm not going to do any introductions. Um, the reason why we're here, um, hundreds of schools are already benefiting from you using balance and, and Ben and Rebecca will correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I've been aware of balance for a good two or three years um, at least. It's a speedy point in time assessment platform that gives teachers a clear picture of how children are progressing. And let's face it, one child in front of the classroom with 30 kids is hard enough. Having a bits of software to make that admin a bit easier for teachers is a win for all of us. Uh, particularly right now during the global pandemic when things are very tough. Um, so this is a great platform that allows you to make professional judgments, point in time assessments um, from a great organization that has quite a lot of great products actually out there. So we're going to look at balance. So I'm going to, uh, before I uh, crack on, I'm going to just ask Ben to just um, unmute yourself and, and say hello to everyone, introduce yourself, tell everyone what you do, and then we'll hand over to Rebecca to do the same, and then we'll get started. Um, I'm just going to put the survey on your screen uh, while um, you do that also. So Ben, over to you. 
Yeah, hi. Thank you very much, Ross. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, so I'm one of the account managers um, at Angel Solutions and uh, do a lot of training with all of our balance schools. As, as Ross said, we've got lots of balance schools up and down the country, a couple of international schools, uh, one in Malaysia, actually, uh, in Kuala Lumpur Garden International School. Uh, one of them, I don't know if you know of them, Sam, um, but they've start, uh, recently started using balance. Um, so yeah, my, my job is sort of account managing schools, working closely with teachers. So, you know, I was a primary school teacher myself for six years. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm here today to, to show you balance, to you know show you the professional judgments feature, uh, and we'll give you a sneak peek of some of the other little features uh, that are in the system. Um, thank okay, you, Ross. Thank you, Ben. And Rebecca, say hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you, as Ben said, for joining us, particularly those who aren't um, on our time zone. I admire you for being up <laughs> at your hours of the evening. Um, like Ben, I am a former teacher. I was eight years in the primary classroom um, before moving into ed tech and finding my way into balance um, this time last year. And yeah, we're here to, we support our schools up and down the country, our international schools as well, um, from the, the, the get-go with balance and really embedding that and, and changing the culture within their school. Great, so thank you, Ben and Rebecca. And behind the scenes, there's a couple more of the Angel Solutions Balance team who will uh, probably say hello or in the chat box and what have you as we go through. Um, so I'll start with this question to everyone in the chat box. Um, I say virtually hands up. If you like spreadsheets and you like inputting data manually, uh, and I know people who have been in the profession for a long time, um, we all, we all know that data is critical, um, but certainly inputting that on your own at the desk without children and stuff is a bit of a headache. Um, so we know balance helps reduce this burden. Um, you know, a ju professional judgment tool, which will help you reduce your workload. So I think what we'll do to begin with, um, I'll just take this survey off your screen, everyone. Um, Ben, can I just hand over to you first? Can we just get a quick little introduction um, and just get everyone excited about what, what it is it does? And, and then I'll kind of pose some hard questions to you. And everyone else in the chat box, ping me through your questions and I'll fire them to Ben and Rebecca and see if I can uh, wobble their nerves a little bit. OK, so Ben, over to you. <laughs> yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Ross, in terms of I think assessment is so important. Um, but I think spreadsheet, spreadsheets is not necessarily the way forward. So we have a uh, professional judgments tool. So that will allow teachers to give a point in time assessment based on what the uh, children have uh, been taught so far what the teachers managed to cover so far it's not about predicting you know sort of in the future where the children might be it's about saying right just based on what we've done so far where is where is the children's understanding up to um and, and you'll see when, when we take you through the system how uh, quick and easy that is how you have live summary bars how you know, everyone can log in and see that within the system itself you're not having to update spreadsheets send them to head teachers send them to year group partners you know recalculate them or balance does all of that for you um sort in the system i don't know becca if there's anything you want to add <laughs> no we'll uh we'll, things will become apparent as we go on we're going to do a couple of screen shares and show you the system and and talk as we go really and just see how we can best help make your life easier that's our main aim design but balance is very much designed by teachers for teachers so that's our aim is to make yeah life as simple for possi well, as possible this is my first question to you both as uh, you know with your teacher hat on what are the benefits for teachers, what what have you seen in, in your transition from teacher to kind of working with balance? What do you see as those kind of key benefits to begin with? I think I think for me and with balance, it's that missing link between sort of your planning, your assessment. It's linking everything together. It's assessment shouldn't be that. Um, you know that sort of add-on that you do at the end of term when you know the head teacher quickly says right where, where are your where, where are your assessments for this term and you're sort of filling in spreadsheets you think oh this this number needs to be a bit higher I think when I was teaching it was levels and it was you know you could change from four c's to four b's and and it for me it felt very much like a number game um, whereas balance allows you know you to do your planning to reflect on what you've taught to uh, look at the children's understanding I think a big part of it is it comes back to the child which mm -hmm. for me assessment should be about the child it shouldn't be that like, like I say add-on at the end which I think sadly speaking to a lot of you know schools teachers now that they do feel that assessment can become that um, just a bolt on at the end of a term and it shouldn't be it should be used by teachers to inform where they're going next uh, mm -hmm. and I think balance will allow you to do that. Rebecca? Yeah, very much so. Um, assessment is still a numbers game. There's still so many schools that all oh, my child's a, a three. Now they must be a four or whatever 
tracking system schools currently use. There, there, there is lots of mindset there. Balance, um, Ben and I aim to support our schools and it, it's taken that journey. It's looking at your assessment side of things, but we also have um, a curriculum tool that allows teachers to plan and really think about what mm. they're teaching, what they would like to assess and um, very personal for each school. And it's about embedding that, not just with staff, but also with children and having that growth mindset language and, and really all coming together in one nice little package. And it's it's not doing data for the sake of data sake, which is something I'm very passionate about. It's, we, we, you know, we've all been there. Um, I don't know if you've noticed my kind of virtual questions here. So what? Now what? So the academic in me, Ben, here's your first question. You know, so so what? what, what why should I use balance? Uh, and what could I do with it, I guess? Um, I don't know. I, I think, I think you know, what we've just um, sort of covered there, It's it's got to come back for me. It, it you know, completely resonates. It's got to come back to the child. It's got to come back to what we're doing in the classroom. I think, Becky, you just hit the nail on the head there with um, curriculum. It's got to start with the curriculum. That's what's important at the minute. I think a lot of our schools have been using the time, certainly during you know the first lockdown at the minute, to say, right, let's go in there and let's not make the system. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to fit the way the system works. We want to be able to go in and customize the system so that it's, it works for us. It's what we're assessing is what we're teaching the children in the classroom. And I think that that is so important. Um, um, you know, from a teacher point of view, um, it's got to be led by the school, led, led by the teacher and, and actually, you know, where you can led by the children. And so we very much encourage the children to get involved with the assessment. So that the formative side of things, which we won't cover, you know, too, as much today, but we say, you know, get that up as a classroom display, uh, get, get the wheel up in the classroom and get the children involved, um, you know, art, art, articulating where they feel their understandings up to um, so that you as a teacher know how to move their learning forward because I think when it comes down to it that that for me should be sort of the point of assessment. So uh, thank you uh, I've got a few questions in the chat box I'm going to read them out in a moment to, to you both. Rebecca I know balance has been around before the pandemic so can you just give us a quick overview how were schools using it before and how has it maybe been beneficial for schools during the kind of coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, of course. So Balance is, it's been around for a couple of years, but it's the newest member of um, uh, Angel Solutions. So we have several different software out there, Balance being, you know, for use in the classroom. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, which seems like forever ago, trying to remember what life was like before everything happened last March, February time. Um, Pre-pandemic, we it was very it was, it was very much embedded in the schools. When the pandemic happened, it, Ben and I had to reevaluate re priorities for school at that time. Schools were, you know, they were trying to survive. Teachers were trying to survive and teach their children at home, teach their children in school, figure out what was, you know, everything was different on a day-to-day -day basis. And as Ben touched on earlier, we went spent a lot of time, particularly last summer, working with our schools at mm -hmm looking okay let's just take a step back what are you teaching why is this relevant to your curriculum let's have a look and build this within balance and um, we look at ways to help support them with the the formative and summative assessment tools of how they can um ben will touch on that in a moment as well but we will you know how best to support your group of children at home and your group of children at school and you know not just putting data in for data's sake what can I do with that and how is that affecting me as a teacher and how is that having a knock-on effect of you know when my children are 10 or or next week and, and things change again so it, it's very much we've worked with schools to to, to kind of re-embed but from the view of a, of a pan, of, you know, with everything that's going on at the moment, yeah. how it's best relevant for them, and it's working really, really mm -hmm. well within the classroom. Thank you, um, thank you, Rebecca and Ben. So, um, you know, my my uh, awareness of balance, you know, having seen, you know, my life as a, a teacher, a blogger, I suppose, I get a lot of products sent my way, and, and I know balance not only looks great as a designer. Um, but it works fantastically. So um, I'm sure we've all experienced some hideous piece of software that doesn't plug in, um, the password doesn't work, all those types of things. So not only does it look great, but it works brilliantly. My favourite part about it is this overview of your curriculum and threads into your assessment where this drives your assessment decisions rather than the other way around. And Ben and Rebecca, some questions in the chat box, maybe take a turn uh, whoever thinks you can answer what. Um, so a question from Joanne, uh, do we set up our own criteria or are they set up within the system? Uh, that's your first question. Second question, 
how does, does it link with Pro Monitor or, or you know, MIS? I'm sure it plugs into most single sign on. And then what curricula can be covered and up to what level of qualification? So you've got three questions, criteria, MIS and curriculum qualifications. Yeah, I, I, so I think that first question, thank you for that. I think uh, we've tried to make balance as customizable as possible. So I'm going to show you when we look at professional judgments that the different statements and the language, the criteria that you use for those judgments is completely customizable. Um, and I think when I start the demonstration, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but similarly in the, in the curriculum tool in various parts of the system, you can go in and personalize it, tweak it, customize it so that it fits um, your school. Um, Rebecca, I don't know if you want to answer the yes. MIS question. Um, balance is for the primary school. So um, we pull all your information, all your school data through from your, an MIS link from your MIS system, um, depending on what, uh, you know, whatever that is, pulls straight through into the system. There's no manual um, input from you there. It's all done automatically. Um, as Ben said, everything is very customizable. It opens up to all eventualities and the different ways you work um, within school. Curriculum wise, we have full curriculum coverage and um, we have some schools that just use it for core subjects, some that use it for foundation, most for everything. So it gives you the option there to really think what do I need and what is best for, for school at the moment. Okay, great. Um, so I hope um, that answers your question. Um, we've got one more question before we go into a demo. Just primary is the question I've been asked by D. So I know we're here to focus in on primary. So maybe Ben, Rebecca, can you elaborate on uh, particular key stages? Yeah, we, we cover everything from year one up until year six. So we, we don't do early years at the moment. Um, it is something that is potentially in our roadmap. We've had the, a few requests from, uh, from schools and it's something that we have been discussing as a team. Um, obviously with the early years curriculum change in the summer and everything like that. So mm -hmm. um, currently, and what we'll show you today is for year one through to year six. Okay, great. So um, let, let's get straight on to kind of, we know what balance is. Let's have a look at it, please. Um, and then maybe just pick out some of the kind of key benefits to begin with, and then we'll unpick some of that. So Ben, over to you if that's possible. Yeah, thank you, Russ. Um, great, I've just got a, yeah, a couple of slides I'll just share with you and then we'll actually get into the system. Um, so let me just uh, get that on. Doo -doo -doo. Um, Sorry, it's not let me share that from the beginning. But hopefully you can see my page there. Um, okay, so yeah, as, as we've discussed myself and Rebecca, we're very much part of the account management team at Angel Solutions um, you know, based in Liverpool. And as a company, we've been providing schools with innovative software um, for the last what, 21 years. I think we even had a lockdown party uh, last year to celebrate our 21st birthday. Um, so you, you may well have used some of these tools before. So perspective, five minute lesson plan that we work close to with Ross, Watchstead. Um, but today uh, we're here to introduce you, as we've said, to the newest member of the family, uh, which is Balance. Um, now, to me, Balance is it's not just a piece of software. Um, it's something that means a lot more. Um, it's something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, as, as we've discussed, it was uh, designed by teachers in the classroom, uh, and it was designed to alleviate a lot of the pain points that teachers experience. Uh, it's designed to reduce their workload. Uh, and in doing so, I think it allows teachers uh, to go back to what they do best, uh, which is teaching children in the classroom, ultimately. Um, oh, is that a, oh, sorry, someone else. Someone else joined. I'll let, let you deal with that, Ross. <laughs> uh, ben, can I just ask one thing? Can you maybe switch the presenter view? I know me uh, pushing 50 and I sign. Um, can you make your slides a bit bigger your side for the benefit of everyone and, and make yeah. the view your side? And I'll do all the admin things, don't worry. Yeah, I will. To be honest, uh, Ross, this was the last slide. I'm actually going to go straight into the system now. But when we look at the slides, I will. It was hiding under the Zoom bar. It wouldn't let me get to it. But we'll make sure we do that when, when we share them again. Um, but yeah, that's probably a good time, a good time for me to segue into, um, into balance uh, itself. Um, so this is your, in fact, let me just stop sharing that and uh, share my screen. Uh, the questions in the chat box, folks, and I'll ask them on your behalf. Okay, can I just check that you can all see my screen? Welcome to Balance Fab. Got some yeah, thumbs up there. 
Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the homepage for Balance. Uh, as you'll see, and as we've sort of touched on a bit, uh, there's a lot that can be done in Balance from designing curriculum and creating your, your long-term, medium-term, short-term plans um, to recording both formative and summative assessments, and then all the analysis that comes with it. Um, so we've got some schools that they choose to replace their more traditional trackers with Balance, because um, like I say, you can do everything within the system. And we have some schools that, that buy into balance and use parts of it uh, and use it to sort of complement uh, some of the assessment uh, systems that they already have in the system. So it really is sort of a tool for everyone, uh, for, sort of for any school. Uh, now today we're going to focus on the professional judgments. Uh, we, we do refer to them as PJs in-house, so forgive me if I slip and, and call them PJs, you'll know what I mean. Um, and then, like I said, Rebecca is going to have a, a quick look at some uh, a couple of the other features. Um, so looking at uh, the professional judgments, when when a new school uh, first buys into balance, um, they'll have training with myself or Rebecca, and this is the first place we bring them. Uh, and it's to do with that. Uh, I know there's a question um, earlier about customizing the sort of language, the statements, the criteria in the system. Uh, this is where we come to to say, right, as an admin user, before we get started, let's just set up your statements for you. And um, so we have five statements that are default in the system. And these are the five that I'm going to be using today um, as we as we show you balance, as we do the demonstration. But if you look at it and think, do you know what? We only have four. We, we don't want this nearly secure. You can just delete that uh, really quick and easy. If you don't like the language secure, you'd prefer working at or expected. Again, it's really easy to go in, edit that language. Um, you can even change the color if you're fussy about your colors. Uh, and then you can click publish all and that will then go, that language will then go through the rest of the system. So when your teachers um, log in to record their judgments, they just pick from the language that you as, as the school leaders have chosen um, to use at your school. So that, that's really straightforward, I think, to use there. Um, I'm just going to go uh, into that. For some reason it's not letting me pick my tabs at full screen. There we go. Okay, so this is our teacher um, input page. So once your language has been set up, you'll see here, like I said, we're going to use those five statements here um, that they are, appear there uh, for me as the class teacher uh, to go in and choose um, those judgments for the children. So we're going to look at geography today in this example, uh, but you can choose from any subject that's in balance. Like we said, we've got all the core and foundation subjects. Um, and just before I show you how easy it is to record a judgment, I just want to be clear what we mean by a point in time uh, assessment, so, sorry, by a professional judgment, and it is a, that point in time assessment. Um, so it's a teacher saying, right, for, for this child in my class, based on what I've taught them so far of the geography curriculum in this example, where is their understanding up to? Um, and it's a case where you know, we encourage teachers to sort of look through the books, speak to children, um, you know, everything is that all round sort of teacher assessment, I guess, when I was teaching, uh, and they will record their professional judgment. Now, you could go in and for each child, just record the judgment one child at a time, um, but that's not the most efficient way. And, and in balance, we're all about being efficient and trying to save teachers time. Um, so I've got groups set up in here. For example, I've got a key worker children group. So I know some of my children are still going into school. I've got 12 pupils here uh, and I can go in and I can give an assessment. I can multi-select, I can select all and say, do you know what? All of these children are secure um, currently in geography and what we've taught them so far. I've, I can then go in and say, however, I know Theodore is, he's working well below. He's, you know, um, you know maybe working on year two curriculum. And we've got a couple in here that I know are working below. Um, and maybe, you know, I know at the bottom of the list here, I've got these two children that are actually working at greater depth. And I can save that. And you'll see how quick that was for me to, for that group of children, those 12 children, I've updated their assessments and it's given me this live summary bar across the top. Now this is just looking at my key worker children. So I can see that over 50% of my key worker children that are still going into school every day um, are secure in, in the um, geography and based on what we've taught so far. Um, okay, and I'm gonna quickly interrupt you there. That, I, I suspect one or two people watching are wondering, can you edit this judgment bar? And I know you probably picked up on it at some point, but that color coded bar across the top where you've got working well below and all the different assessment terms, you can be spoken, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. So that was just the screen I showed previously. It was just on here. There's an admin page and you can go in here. If you don't like the word secure, you can go in and, and yeah, completely personalize that, um, you know, to what, whatever language you want to use as a school. And like I said, you don't have to have five. You could get rid of one of them and um, just have three or four. You can add a new statement if you want to. Um, but yeah, com completely um, customizable for schools. 
And once that's done on the admin page, it then obviously feeds through to the rest of the system. So all your teachers will see that bespoke language that your school is using. Great. Um, so any questions in the chat box so far, uh, folks? So we've, we've kind of looked at the assessment points and Ben's kind of given uh, a little overview. And send those through in the chat box and I'll fire them over to Ben and Rebecca on your behalf. Um, Rebecca, can I hand over to you to maybe uh, take us a little step forward? Can we maybe look a bit more detail at um, you know, some of the other aspects that we could uh, see within balance? Yeah, I, oh, sorry, I can just see Rebecca's muted. I was just, if you don't mind, Ross, I'll just show the, the next uh, page of the analysis page and then uh, we'll hand over to Rebecca. Is that okay if I just yeah, show you? Fine, yeah. Fab. Um, so like I said, this was the teacher input page um, and you can see how, how quick and easy, how, so much quicker than spreadsheets and then having to email these spreadsheets to your SLT. Um, you know, you're not having to do any of these calculations here. That's all been done um, you know, automatically in the system. So then for any SLT users out there, I'm going to go on to this whole school analysis page. So what the page we just looked at, once all your teachers in the school have completed that for their class, that will feed this whole school analysis page and give you this overview. Uh, and I think this is so useful that the amount of school leaders we speak to who say this is just invaluable, it saves them so much time, they're not having to collate this, they can look at it, it even as a, the English subject lead, if I'm looking at this saying for reading, across the whole school, I can, you know, see the areas uh, that, where it's really strong reading, the, the year groups, that the areas where maybe it need, we need a bit more support and intervention. Um, I can open these up. So for year three here, I can see, right, if I want to know who are these 15% that are nearly secure, let, let's do something about it. I can open it up. And this is an example of a two form entry school. Um, you know, if it's three form entry, you'd have three columns here and, and it allows you to compare your classes to the sort of year group as a whole. And it'll allow me to come here and I can see, right, these are my nearly secures, these seven children. And I can have those vital conversations with the class teachers to say, you know, okay, th these children talk to me about them. You know, they'll be on the teacher's radar. What, what are we doing? What, how can we help um, put interventions in place to, to try and get them up to secure um, by the end of the year? And actually, if you, if you click on the names and later on, um, I know Rebecca is going to show you um, some sort of individual pies that will give you more information about those children. Um, so that, that I think is all really useful. I think we've got filters here as well that this all links to your MIS, but you can quickly say, right, let's look at males. Let's look at the boys in reading. And I've clicked apply and that has just changed um, the percentages there. And we're now just looking at our data for boys. So if you've got a governor's meeting that you need to quickly, you know, generate this information for, it's there. You can save it as a PDF. Um, you, know, you can apply more than one filter. I know when I was teaching pupil premium boys was always a thing in reading. Um, how do we get boys to engage with reading? Uh, and you can see, well, it, you know, in your school, how are they getting on here? Um, and like I say, yeah, saved as a PDF, printed off, um, you know, you, you can share it with the names, without the names for, for whoever might want to see it. Um, and you're able to see that over time as well. So you could look back and say, right, let, show me what this was like at October half term, show me what it was like at Christmas. Um, and you can compare, you know, when you get to the end of the year, how, how those judgments have changed. Right. So I told you it looked great, everyone, didn't I? And, and my life as a parent, a school leader and the governor. Uh, and someone that sees a lot of these products, uh, you'll see that it's not, not only clean on the eye, but uh, you can get pretty much every report. And as Ben's just been sharing some of those, some of the questions that I got for Rebecca is, um, you know, how useful would this be for me in a parent meeting setting as a teacher? You know, that school leader analysis or perhaps a Senko, and maybe just take it one step further, give you four questions at once. Uh, how would I use this through a pandemic, uh, through virtual school meetings? Yeah, so this is vital as, you know, subject lead, you mentioned Senko there. Um, if Ben just scrolls up slightly to the filter, if say, for example, if I'm Senko, I'm coming in, we've got a send status there. As Ben showed with the filter, I can just filter all my send children throughout school. And for each subject, I get an overview straight away. I'm not having to collect data. I'm not having to speak to teachers or pass around spreadsheets. Um, Pandemic-wise, particularly... Um, this pandemic, we focused on work with a lot of our schools to straight away after Christmas, make sure your autumn two of, you know, PJs are up to date. That was vital then because they knew exactly where their children were um, leaving the classroom in December, beginning of January, and then they can monitor and they can use this through the pandemic. Um, as Ben showed, you've got the, the, two, the groups you can set up there. So we had a group of key worker children, a group of homeschool children, 
and that can just uh, monitor their progress throughout however long lockdown goes on and you know whether it's the march or you know whatever happens down the line it's it's vital it can be you know done weekly it can be done after the end of a topic at the end of a half term and um, it will just then point in time teacher judgments are invaluable and can be um you know brought together through this screen i, I guess i'm thinking from a practical aspect if I, you know prior to covid if i'm sitting in a classroom with 30 kids running around me if i have this on the screen and, and ross shows me a piece of work it's literally a quicker a quick matter of you know go to the system update the judgment and it's live in-class assessment immediate and it kind of builds into the bigger whole school picture and um, give, give me some anecdotes or experiences of what teachers have said to have used it what benefits they they report i think yes certainly on that point Russ, it's worth mentioning that this works um it's been designed to work brilliantly on ipads on mobile phones so you're not restricted to having to be you know tied to your your desk and and you're you know logging onto the school network this can be done um you know on the bus on the way home you want to do it actually like you say live in the lesson certainly the formative side of things um you know with our learning wheel you, you can you know be doing a lesson speaking to the children having that interaction uh, and actually putting your assessments in it, you know those point in time at the point mm -hmm. of learning so that's another job you're not having to do you know when you get home sat on on the sofa you know on a Sunday evening it can be done um sort of you know whilst you're you're in the classroom with the children uh, and certainly that's a big feature for uh, the formative side of things uh, that our teachers find really really useful with balance so uh, I, I could you know thinking of about crazy classroom I could go around walking around the the classroom pre-COVID, post-COVID, with a, a tablet, walking around the classroom with input on the device, really good for workload. I've got a question here from Rob for either of you. Um, would there be a way to view or consider a group within the lowest stage or judgment band where SEN children often end up that shows their progress so that a positive view can be more easily seen? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh. Good. Um, what we'll go on to in a moment, so uh, once Ben's um, rounded up the, the PJ section, we're going to have a little look at some of the other areas in balance. So this is our, our summative side, but what we also provide is um, a more formative side of balance where we can um, bespoke and tailor the objectives that are being taught in the classroom. And it's brilliant for tracking progress of my lower attaining children. You know, a child is always going to be working, you know, working well below if, you know, we've got a statement to child or an SEND ch child. It's about, you know, celebrating their yeah. progress and, and celebrate their movements. And we, we're going to show so, that. In a so moment. on that note, we're halfway through the session, everybody. So thank you for staying tuned for people watching remotely. Um, we know that curriculum should drive assessment, not the other way around. My favourite part, no offence to Andy, the CEO, is the short-term planning curriculum overview side. I know the PJ is a new feature. It looks very great, very clean, very dynamic. Can we get straight into that part, Ben and Rebecca? Can we look at the short-term aspect? I'm not Definitely. buying Definitely. Let's part. share my screen here. Um, so within balance, um, obviously the PJs is just um, one section of everything. Um, as Ben said, we provide the curriculum, we provide our, our planning trilogy, as we like to call it. Um, through balance, um, we encourage schools to um, adapt the curriculum to, to personalise, to, to bespoke objectives, to really think about what they're teaching in the classroom um, and how that's going to be assessed. Once the curriculum is formalised within balance, and we have some um, curriculums in there to help you do that and to kind of evaluate what you're doing inside school, um, that then feeds through nicely on our little journey um, to the long um, term planning so we can break our objectives down into to terms and to half terms. We then have a medium section where it you know, covers all eventualities. Balance is very good at doing that. So whether you plan, you know, standalone subjects, math, science, history, or whether you are quite, uh, you know, cross curricular and thematic. I've got a, a unit here I'm going to touch on in a moment called We're All Humans. Nice cross curricular learning there. This all feeds then into our endpoint, which is our short term planning and the joy of the short term planning um, in my Blue Peter style. Here's one I made earlier is that all our objectives that we've decided to, to teach for each, um, you know, each week of the, the school year, you will get a, a screen that looks like this. So I can log on to balance. I can come into short term plan and write what am I teaching this week in you know, spring two, week one. And um, it's got my days of the week here. It's got my um subjects but it's got my objectives as well so I know when I was teaching I used to spend 
a good 20 minutes, half an hour every week on a Word document, copying and pasting my objectives to, to then print out and share with staff. And, you know, this is what I'm teaching. Balance does it all for you. And um, you can see very clearly, you know, what subject, but what objective I am teaching. If we pop up to the edit section in the top right here, you'll see that it's a really nice, clean layout. Ben mentioned the mobile friendliness of the, of the site previously. Um, this can be done on iPads, phones, nice drag and drop facility. So if we choose our medium term plan, um, you'll be able to see that we've got our objectives over on the left. We've got our days of the week over on the right. And it's a nice, simple drag and drop facility. So I can um, search by keyword if I want to, to look at something um, specific and find it within all my objectives for the week. I can look at the assigned, I'm going to click on unassigned here at the moment and I'm going to look, there's three objectives left that haven't been included in my plan and I'm just going to divvy these up now and have a little look at them. So I was year five teacher, I'm quite biased, but um, you know, a bit, range of devices to build cohesion with a paragraph. Okay, brilliant. I'm going to drag and drop. That's something I'm going to do Monday's lesson. Um, the next one, what haven't we included, you know, paragraph, complex information, narratives relevant to the story structure, that's going to be Tuesday. So again, drag and drop. But what I can do, um, my last objective here, develop the setting characters and plot and um, different ways to open the story. That's something that I may work on over a couple of days. So I can multi um, select here and I'm going to add this into Wednesday, Thursdays and Fridays objectives because this is something I'm going to work on. We're going to write our, our powerful opening to the story based on the text we're looking at. And I can click save there. So you'll notice that everything's been added into our days of the week. But alongside that, I can really start to think about what I um, how I'm going to teach things. We have a note section, which is designed to be very light touch in no way we're, we're, we're typing everything and you know, a thousand words in there. It, it, it's for me, it's my planning. Um, for example, in here, I've got, you know, maybe some key questions, some key points in here. I've, I've um, started to talk about the text that I want to cover with my year fives. We've also got room for links down the bottom. So I've got some really useful science resources, video links there, skeleton and muscles video that's going to go well with my, my science class. Now, how the three thoughts your way. So I, I love the the kind of drag, click and drag functionality. In fact, that looks mm -hmm. super. And the the kind of replication of objectives, which I guess builds my kind of medium or even individual lesson plans. Thinking always about that teacher workload. I can see the save PDF button in the top right hand corner. If line manager asks for a copy of the plans or an observation or whatever, um, what what I'm sure you'll come to this, but whether it's just something you can show us quickly now or or in a moment. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it covers all those things, but uh, are those also the benefits that it has? Yeah, so we, we've got two um, outputs, um, everything, especially at this time in the uncertainty, whether you're uh, a team teacher, you you know, PPA cover or, you know, we're, you know, we're poorly and there might be supply coming in for whatever reason. Um, from this screen, we can grab two different outputs. So we've got our, our days of the week here with our objectives. Um, we can export the notes as well. So this can be, you know, passed on to my teaching assistant, other adults within the classroom shared with SLT if, yeah. if that's what happens at your school. And um, the other PDF function is, you know, here's my list of Monday. Here's exactly what I'm teaching. So if I've got supply coming in around poorly, we can quickly, you know, this can be exported, it can be sent, it can be printed um, and shared and with relevant members of staff. In the pandemic, you could send a parent version for homeschooling. Very much so. So, you know, mum dad whoever's at home this is what i'm teaching or this is what we're looking at this week and we've got that plan ahead of time we're going to send our work to support that our right. online videos everything like that but it, you know, know, i love that parent homeschooling here we're getting told on the morning you know and i know teachers <laughs> under a lot of pressure but um little I, notice I would help little notice would help us prepare lessons a little bit earlier but, um you can't win them all but um uh, so what else can it do this this okay. side well, from this screen and linking into what Ben's going to pick up on in just a moment, based on um, my objectives here, we have a tab down the bottom called Create New Learning Event. Now, this links into our formative side of balance um, and it allows us to formative, formatively assess identified objectives. So I can choose um, my English objectives, for example. I can do this on a weekly basis, a daily basis, cross-curricular. However it is we want to do this, let me just pop in spring to English. Um, we can choose, you know, end of the week, I'm going to assess this and we can create that learning event. And that leads very over to, if I just stop my screen share there, that leads very nicely over to what Ben's going to share next and have a look at um, our learning events in more detail. 
Great. So thanks, Rebecca. So over to you, Ben. And um, again, reminder, everyone, uh, questions in the chat box, I'll ask them on your behalf. Um, we've got about uh, 20 minutes to go or so. Uh, and then we're going to talk about costs and all the technicalities. And I'll bring in Andy, uh, uh, the CEO of, of Angel, Stroke Balance, uh, to kind of answer any questions that you will have. Um, ben, what else can it do? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ross. And thank you, uh, Rebecca. So Rebecca's just showing you how you can, um, you know, from your short term plan, that weekly timetable, if you like, you can create a learning event. I want to show you another way, because uh, this is really popular with some of our teachers, that you can go in and create a learning event that you can then assess for your children for that week or for that topic. Um, and this was designed to work just like a Google search bar. So we've got a search box here, and I might search for the word graphs. Um, and what's that doing? It's now searching all of balance, all the curriculum. And um, remember that you will have, you know, customized and tweaked. It's your curriculum for your school. And it's looking for that word graph. And it is basically narrowing down the content to try and put, you know, at the top of that list in your face, what you're looking for to try and save you time. So you're not trawling through uh, loads of curriculum. Now, to make that even easier, we've got these great filters on the, the left hand side here. So it's showing me that graphs, it appears in maths, but it's actually also told me that it appears in science. And that sometimes can be useful. Speaking, speaking to teachers, they'll say, you know, I hadn't even thought about doing a lesson, you know, I'm covering maths and statistics. Uh, and actually, you know, balance told me that it also appears in science. And, you know, at that point, you'd think, you know, what, I'll do sort of a cross curricular uh, lesson and I can include both objectives from the maths curriculum and the science curriculum. Them, creating a cross-curricular learning event um, and that's another side that I think is really powerful in balance it, it really allows and in fact it encourages that sort of cross-curricular teaching um, so I might say do you know what yeah I'm going to put these two objectives that are from my maths from statistics but I'm also going to look at in science because we're looking at line graphs I'm going to include that objective as well um, and by clicking on that plus it's basically just added it to my it's like a shopping basket like your Amazon shopping basket up here uh, and I've got those three objectives that, that are selected um, and just before I create that learning event I just want to to highlight these other filters and um, that they were really designed to make teachers lives easier so it, it knows I'm the year six teacher in balance. So it is only giving me year six curriculum, uh, year six objectives at the minute. However, if I want to look back and see the year five objectives as well, I can. If I want to look back and see what's in year two, because I've got a child working on year two, I can do that. Um, but it's just defaulting to my age related curriculum again to- uh, uh, Ben, I'll just interrupt. Now, at my 25 years in, in, in schools and leadership, trying to get an overview of your curriculum was a real workload headache. And to try and get that in time moment, what are year sevens learning history, maths, and art across the school? Um, was a real headache. I, the obvious thing here is I can get this a snapshot picture of what's taking place across the school. Uh, and there's, I guess there's no excuse for schools now. You can get this at any point, any any year group, any child. Um, so what 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 would it look like when you press this button? Does does it give me the overview of a, a subject, a child, what what diet they're getting across the curriculum? Yeah, so when I create, uh, when I click create, it will show me um, yeah, all the children in my class. Uh, in fact, I'll do that. Um, so when I've, I'll need to add a title in here. So again, when we um, train with schools, we encourage putting things like spring two, week one, and this is, you know, line graphs and it's, um, so some, some teachers will create this at the end of a week for what they've covered that week, others it might be topic. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you can set this for today. Um, yeah, it defaults to today's date. But if I'm planning ahead and thinking, you know what, this is what we're doing next week, I can set this for the next week, and I can click create. Um, and I'll just click on the view so that this isn't uh, you know, we'd almost need another half an hour to show you all of the formative side and the wheels. But this will, you know, it then brings up your class. You've got your children. You've got your three key assessment points for that week. And then you've got your learning wheels here, um, which you then assess. And that then feeds through to the uh, analysis page that I know uh, Rebecca is going to cover finally for us to show, you know, some of those individual sort of pupil profiles and, um, you know, showing off their, if you like, their strengths and, and areas for development. Okay, great. So thank you, Ben. I've got one question from Bianca here. Are the objectives preloaded? Now, I'm going back to maybe what Rebecca showed earlier when you were clipping and dragging all those objectives. I guess at some point you have to input those or are there some things already there available? 
Yeah, no, th that's a great question. Um, so we have curriculums preloaded in the system. Um, so we've worked with subject spe specialists for maths. It, we've used first for maths for uh, English. It's the literacy company. You know, we, we've used various subject specialists to put together some really great creative curriculums in the system. Uh, and they're all there. They're all ready for schools to use. Uh, but we also encourage schools when they buy balance to just go in and have a look and have a little tweak and an edit just to make sure that it is fit for what they're teaching their children that it you know matches their own sort of long-term plans and what's being taught and for something like English and maths there's very little needs tweaking because it's from the national curriculum um, mm -hmm. but for things like art you know key stage based subjects schools might want to go in and, and be creative have a bit of a play um you know. ask maybe how some of your international schools are, are using it are they predominantly British based international schools or have you got a wider mix yeah, no, the British base are using the British curriculum, certainly um, the schools that we have currently. Um, yes, yeah, so, so they found that the curriculum does just work for them, um, you know, but it, but at the same time, if they have a, a module that's maybe in addition to what uh, an English primary school might use, they can go in and just add that module in. Um, and, and that's you know, very quick and easy to do. And we work with schools and their subject leaders when we first, um, you know, train the schools when they buy balance and, and show them how to do all of that and, you know, run those sort of virtual, virtual staff meetings at the minute virtual training sessions yeah. um but yeah no right. it works um so rebecca anything else that you need to let everybody know and conscious of everyone's time and then we'll uh kind of clean the line for lots of questions and and then talk about some costs and where you can get demos and have a little play around with the software um so rebecca anything else we need to know oh you're, you're muted <laughs> i was after a flying start there I very quickly now you can all hear me um ben and i have gone on about both sides of the assessment and you know all this information you can put um into balance and um, balance doesn't just tell you about things though balance lets you do something about things so that um if i click on this screen for example when we were looking at the professional judgment screen and um, the analysis earlier on and that lovely slt um drop down um ben mentioned that if we click on a child we have something called the pupil analysis or pupil pies all that data and all that assessment that we're putting into balance allows us to look um, here and to see exactly what a child knows. So if I go to, to my class, for example, I've got two examples to, to quickly share with you. Um, the first one being Kelly. Kelly is one of my higher retaining children in my class. We can open up her, her pupil analysis area, the pupil pies as we call them. Um, and we can see, you know, each of my curriculum subjects here, what coverage we have. So if, if we pick on maths particularly, um, we can see here that I can see exactly what's been taught, 45% of the curriculum. But I can look at um, anything that I've secured on my, um, added on my learning wheel. So by clicking on secure, there's several stages to the learning wheel, as Ben said, we, we could go in, we could talk about this all evening, but you, especially our, our later international schools will definitely be asleep by that point. Um, with Kelly here, I've clicked on secure. It's showing me exactly what objectives Kelly's understood. Kelly's secured within the classroom and she's confident with. It's then got several stages. I've got one to three, four to six, seven and nine. So, you know, um, if I click on my seven to nine here, these are objectives that we've covered. She's kind of got, she's very nearly there, a little bit of more of a push I think I, I needed with X, Y and Z. Um, and this screen is really useful for um, celebrating what a child knows, but also showing, okay, um, in terms of parents' evening, and we mentioned um, sending targets and um, objectives through to parents of things they need to cover. One of the, the, the frequent questions during parents' evening when I was teaching is, you know, what can I do with my child at home? How can I support them? What? And it was always a very generic set of targets that we used to give over. With balance, it allows me to, you know, select my, my lower um, score on the learning wheel, so a four to six, for example. And this shows me what we've covered in class, but this child hasn't quite got yet. We need a little bit more work here. This can be exported as a PDF and we can send this to, to home to mum, dad, whoever's at home to say, right, here's Kelly. Here's what she needs to work on. And there was a question earlier about my um, SEND statement to children. I've got Will down here. I'm going to share um, his information with you as well. So Will is a statement to child. Um, within my year five class, we've all had a child like this you know, if we look at the year five curriculum, they're not accessing age related material, you know, on that professional judgments, they're always going to be working below or working well below. They're always going to be in that section. But this allows us to really break down what this child knows and celebrate that progress. 
So I know that Will, for example, is working within the year one curriculum. I can make learning events based on um, objectives that specifically cater for his needs and you know what he's working on. Um, again, if we focus on maths, we've got, um, you know, he, we, we've taught 20% of the curriculum, we're doing it at a much slower pace, we're spending our time to really delve in and we can click secured here. And instead of saying, you know, Will's, you know, a well below child, actually we're looking, it might be a, a, a lower age related curriculum, but our depth of learning is secure. Look at all the things Will can do. Let's celebrate all the objectives that he can achieve here. He couldn't do this in September, but now he can count to 24. I'm, back. Rough. Um, I'm conscious of Sam watching quite a yep. long time. He's staying up very late. That's <laughs> um, a question here. Um, can we see the whole class overview again, a formative assessment, not just for individual students, if possible, once you've done? And if we can yep. highlight KPI needs to be covered for the whole class? Yeah, so we've got, you can see pupils are on a whole with each of the different subjects here. We also have a, a pupil analysis area, which, um, sorry, a class analysis, which um, we can have a little look at. Um, this would take, a, a, as I said, I'm very conscious of time. Um, ooh, if we just click on analysis, we do have a class analysis, which allows me to, to drill down subject, module, um, sub-module and objective, what children have and haven't got there. There's a whole wealth of analysis that um, we can pull through from balance and we can look at our subjects and, as I said, really drill down into that. Um, that is something that we would very happily cover with um, schools and um, teachers in a, in, a, in, a, in a different demo. This is um, very, as you said, Paul Kowalk, Sam from Koala Lump is probably, you know, looking at us ready for bed. So uh, it's, it's there. We can pull this information through and it gives us a whole wealth of data. Um, you know, in terms of analysis, we, we've only really just scratched the surface in terms of what balance can do. Um, but yeah, it's something that we're very happy. Ben and I can talk about this till, you know, all day, every day. Okay, well, I'm going to bring things to a close. I've got 10 minutes formally. Let's spend five minutes talking about costs. I'm going to bring in the very handsome, uh, good look, uh, good looking, intelligent Andy Kent uh, to talk to you about the kind of critical questions that you've probably all got. And then we'll spend the last five, uh, if you want, to just uh, unmute and fire some random questions over and we'll kind of clip that part of the recording off the session if you want to turn the line and ask uh, any questions to Andy, Ben or Rebecca. So, um, Mr Kent, over to you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, if you're an English-based school, then obviously you may have heard of us already. We work with 19,000 schools. We actually process all the early years phonics key stage one data for every child in the country and always have. Uh, I used to work in a local authority for two years before I set up Angel 21 years ago. You know, my wife's a teacher, I'm a governor in three schools. So a lot of the stuff you may have heard of Watchstead or the five minute lesson plan we built with Ross. So with Balance being the newer member, what we were just doing today, which the wonderful Ben and Rebecca have just shown is, is a teaser overview. Everyone in this room is going to be in a different position. Some of you might be using spreadsheets or you might have uh, needs that aren't being met by your current tracker. You might be happy with your tracker, but looking for something around curriculum or planning. But as a quick summary, you've got your professional judgments, which is that really light touch. And again, you can do that on your phone, your tablets, it saves you all the time to do all the analysis. You, we've even got up and coming, it'll be released any time now, um, uh, the, the transition matrices. So you can look at your prior attainment against those professional judgments. So we're still there to support you with your uh, analysis that you need. If you're part of a multi-academy trust, I know we think we had Osprey Learning Trust in here. We can even take schools professional judgments and aggregate them across a whole trust. So if any schools here are part of a group, we've got tools as well that will help you see that across the trust. You've got your long, medium, short term planning. You can do your units of work. You can customize your curriculums. You've got all that wonderful browse and search. And of course, we're celebrating the progress of individual childs. You've got your learning pies. It's great for your parents evening. So as a quick, just real highlight, as a typical price, prices start from as little as only a thousand pounds a year. And that includes as many users uh, as you want in your school, MIS integration, so all your staff, your pupils, your classes, groups are all coming in automatically, all the updates throughout the year, so any new features, that's all included, uh, and all your trainings included, so there's no hidden costs. We base all our pricing on number on roll, so of course the larger the school will pay more because of course their funding is different. So as an example on the screen, if you're a two form entry school with around 30 children in each class, you're looking at around about £2,000 a year for everything, which is less than £3.50 per teacher per week for that typical school. If, as a result of looking at balance today, on top of that, we want to offer as a, just because we like Ross, 
a hundred pound off the price of balance, whatever your personal price will be, we can send you a quote through. But if you place an order before the end of March, we'll also give you another hundred pound off just because we like Ross. But you can also, if you're a maintained school and your new budget doesn't kick into the 1st of April, we get lots of schools you wanna start now and we'll happily invoice uh, after April. We've been doing this 21 years, no loans, debts or overdrafts. We've grown organically. There's 50 of us based in Liverpool. All the team that you deal with will be based in Liverpool and you can come and see our circus themed offices when we're allowed back out again. So for us, um, we've got a lovely, nice, simple little link. We're gonna email you all with some options. Anyone who completes the survey, we can give you a free balance like curriculum tool, which lets you have a little play with the English reading and writing and geography and history as two of the foundation subjects. But I imagine for lots of you, you might not be the decision maker or you've got some questions specific to your school, or you might want to know what the price is for your number on roll. If you fill in that survey, then we can give you either a personalized demo, we can arrange a time where maybe you and your colleagues can see it and ask specific questions. Equally, if you're ready and you just think you had me at hello and I love the replacement for the spreadsheets, just the PJs, then let us know in that type form. You can follow us on Twitter, uh, balance underscore edu, where you can see all the updates. But that link now, if you want to crack on with filling in the survey, that link on the screen now, which Ross or somebody can post in the chat as well, will be there. It will be the exact same link that we send you when we send the type form through. So hopefully today, what Ben and Rebecca have shown you is something that might replace a tracker, definitely would replace spreadsheets, but it might also complement your tracker. And hopefully you've just had enough of an overview today that will either let you go, actually, I'm interested in exploring this further, or this is the worst tool I've ever seen. And I wish I hadn't have stayed up till midnight and I want to go to bed now. Thank you, Andy. And I'm going to make this mistakes. I'm going to throw in a hundred pounds for myself also to any school that signed up before March and I'll pay that back to Andy. Um, and I'll also throw in one of my books, uh, Mark Plan Teach 2, for, for, for that person, that school, uh, to make things a little easier. Um, so that's it, folks. Formally, uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, Rebecca and Ben for their time, their expertise. Uh, let's face it, balance. We all need a better balance in our lives, mentally, physically, and remotely. Uh, and there you've got a perfect example to make life happier for teachers in school. Um, I told you it was a nice looking website. Not only is it functional, but it's going to make a big difference to your workload. Um, that curriculum overview is fabulous. I know I'm biased, but those professional judgments, imagine walking around your classroom in that lovely little iPad or your phone doing in-class assessments. And then when the school leader says, there's your deadline, you've already done it. Fabulous. Um, so uh, we're going to put some links in the chat box over the next three or four minutes for people still watching. If you're watching this recorded, um, so the link there is on the screen, uh, bit.ly forward slash balance PJs. Make sure uh, you put in the capital letters for that short code to work. Um, I'm Ross McGill. I've been your host. Uh, this is kind of formal recording uh, finished. Uh, so I'm going to press that button there in a moment. Uh, so thank you for your time. If you want to log off and disappear, um, feel free to do so. We're all very busy people. Thank you, Sam from Kuala Lumpur uh, and everyone else from tuning in from wherever you are. Um, and we hope to see you again and get in touch.